All right, today we're going to go over uh, what I like to refer to as bad science. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of shock articles out in the press about the bad things associated with electronic cigarettes. What's the truth and how, how much of that can you trust? Is it good to trust the media or should you go to the source and then analyze the source? Well, the answer is clearly analyze the source because the media is there to make headlines. Good news rarely sells, bad news does. So I'm going to go over a few articles today. Uh, sorry, no demonstrations. So if that's what you're looking for, then just tune out now. But I'm going to go over some science and try to explain what you should really look at with uh, information like this. Uh, like I said, i got four articles. The first one I'm going to talk about is this one. It was published in January of this year. It's uh, E-Cigarettes and National Adolescent Cigarette Use 2004 to 2014. It was by Stanton Glantz and uh, Laura Dutra. Uh, out of California and what basically what they were looking at is that there's uh, been a lot of people just saying they are uh, that people are uh, decreasing use of cig cigarettes directly in proportion to the increase in use of electronic cigarettes and what they wanted to do was to analyze that and see if that is indeed the case so what they did was they took those years of 2004 to 2014 uh, and they did uh, studies to look for statistical significance. Um, and what they found, or what they claimed to have found, was that through that course of time, dividing into two blocks, 2004 to 2009, and then 2011 to 2014, that there is no statistical, uh, statistically significant difference in the rate of decline of smoking with the advent of electronic cigarettes. Uh, so they, they feel like there's nothing there uh, that's in the electronic cigarettes that's helping people to quit smoking. Well, my answer to that is, I think it was Will Rogers who said there are liars, damn liars, and statistics. Uh, so I think this is a case where statistics were used to prove a point, a preconceived point, and not used in a way to actually demonstrate what's going on. Uh, I've got a couple of charts here for you uh, to look at. These uh, are off of the um, CDC site, uh, actually, I'm sorry, American Lung Association site. And uh, what we're, we're looking at here is this is the this is the information on uh, tobacco use in high school students. Um, and he was specifically talking about adolescents. So this is, we're going to just isolate out the high school students to make it easier. Uh, and what you'll see is there's a uh, decrease in uh, smoking along the entire course of it. And it looks like the, the red line, uh, the top line, which is uh, cigarettes, has been fairly steadily decreasing through the course of the through the course of time. Interestingly, if you look here, right here, this is 2013. The purple line is electronic cigarette use. You can see 2013, there's a huge spike in the use of electronic cigarettes in high school students. So the, the question comes up in the analysis that says that there's no statistically significant decline in uh, electronic cig and cigarette use with, with the advent of electronic cigarettes, why would you pick a couple things? Why would you pick 2011 for your starting date when there was very insignificant use of electronic cigarettes at that point? Uh, and why would you ignore 2010? 2010, he completely ignored 2010. Uh, I don't know why. It doesn't look like it would have affected his results in any way, but you know, he, he blocked that one off for some reason. And I'm not going to ask him why. Maybe he'll be kind enough to post a comment in the section below if he happens to see this and, and see. And Stan, I'm not picking on you. I'm just you know showing you how uh, statistics can be manipulated. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the cutoff on this was 2014. Uh, this article that he wrote was written in 2017. Now, it was early 2017, so the data from 2016 was not available. But certainly the data from 2015 was available. I'm um, not sure why he didn't use that. Uh, I've got another chart, the same chart that I've modified a little bit to show, uh, add in the, uh, the years subsequent to 2014 to show you what's going on. But let's, let's analyze this a little bit further. Um, so no statistical significant uh, decrease in s smoking with the advent of electronic cigarettes uh, starting from 2011. So all right, let's go, let's go and look at a, a different chart. This is the same chart. And I've added in, I've stretched it out, and I've added in the numbers from the CDC 
on uh, smoking and electronic cigarettes. And interestingly enough, uh, electronic cigarettes have uh, decreased uh, from 2015 to 2016. I'm not sure why that is. There's any number of reasons. Uh, it could be, uh, of course, the tobacco control experts will say it's it's their efforts to get people off of tobacco products, uh, even though electronic cigarettes aren't a tobacco product. They've defined it as such, so they, they get to use that term. Uh, they It could just be what I like to call the, the Rubik's Cube phenomenon, where there's a fad, people do it for a little while, and then they get kind of bored with it and move on. Um, or it, it, could, it could be that as smoking has declined, there's less of an interest in using electronic cigarettes as a smoking cessation aid. So as people get off of cigarettes, they um, also get off of electronic cigarettes. So there's any, any number of explanations. I'm not sure which one is correct, uh, but this is the same chart I showed you before, but extended out through uh, 2016 statistics. 2017 clearly is not out yet because it is still 2017. We won't have that until probably next year some some point. Now I've done my own analysis on this on this data uh, and I, I looked at it in two different ways. I looked at the um, rate of decline from um, 2000 to 2013 which is pre-e-cig use or, or pre-popularity of electronic cigarettes and if you look at that data the, the total percentage drop was 53 percent it went from 28 percent using cigarettes to 13 percent which sounds like it's pretty good. Uh, that was over a 13-year time span. And if you average that out, that average drop in, in use of cigarettes during that period of time was about 4% per year. Not bad. Uh, that's all tobacco control efforts, and they, they were reasonably successful. Uh, but it, 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 people obviously were still smoking. Then if you look at the data from 2013 to 2016, uh, and look at that decline, it, it dropped from 13% to 8%. So it's only an absolute uh, drop of uh, about 5% during that period of time. But it was a 38% total drop in smoking over that uh, four-year time frame, which is an average 9.6% drop per year. So interestingly enough, be, before electronic cigarettes were out, the average rate of drop Per year was about four percent. After they came out, it was about nine point six percent drop. So what, what we're looking at is we're looking at more than doubling the rate of smoking cessation on an annual basis once electronic cigarettes became available. Uh, I don't know how anybody can say that that's not statistically significant. It's, it seems pretty significant to me. But again, this is a way that if if you look at a purely statistical analysis as, as uh, Dr. Glantz did you can manipulate it in such a way to show what, almost whatever you want. So the rate of smoking cessation has accelerated dramatically since the advent of electronic cigarettes, if you look at the numbers to date. Um, second paper I'm going to go on and look at is, um, we'll look at the one on um, diacetyl. There was a um, article that came out. This was uh, in 2015, I think. Oh, June 2016. Um, this is on flavoring chemicals and diacetyl and electronic cigarettes. And what they found was that a certain percentage of electronic cigarettes had what they termed high levels of diacetyl. Diacetyl is a chemical associated with popcorn lung. Uh, interestingly enough, there was a, a media article that came out shortly after that that says the, the chemical associated with popcorn lung is found in electronic cigarettes. And as a physician, now I get people in my office, oh, I don't want to try electronic cigarettes because they've been shown to cause popcorn lung. Well, what's the truth of it? Uh, here's an interesting chart uh, that I found um, on the daily inhaled diacetyl. And this is going to be a little bit hard to see. Uh, but if you if you look at these things, the um, the, the the ones over here uh, are this is the uh, the current study the diacetyl that they found in the current study an average. This is one that Dr. Farsalinos did in uh, his study to show the diacetyl and electronic cigarettes 
Uh, and it is a good idea to get that out because there is a, a, uh, an association with uh, popcorn lung. But what's this? What's this? This is the diacetyl found in cigarettes. So if you, if you only look at one part of it and you say, I found it, but you don't look at the other part, which this study never compared to cigarettes, you're going to say, hey, I found diacetyl. Let me try to scare people. Well, they're already get, if you're a smoker, you're already getting 100 times or more than 100 times more diacetyl in your cigarettes uh, than you would be getting if you switched over to the much safer vapor products. Uh, and interestingly enough, not only has there never been a case of popcorn lung associated with the use of electronic cigarettes, there's never been a case of popcorn lung associated with the use of cigarettes. The only exception to this is in post-lung transplant patients who smoke uh, and who continue to smoke and who are on immunosuppressants for their um, transplant. Uh, but there's an association of uh, popcorn lung, or it's also called bronchiolitis obliterans, associated with the use of um, uh, the anti-rejection uh, anti drugs anyway. So anyway, electronic cigarettes, diacetyl, cigarettes, diacetyl. So let's, let's kind of put that one to rest. I'm not really concerned about the diacetyl in, in there, even if it is a little bit higher than what I would like to see. There's no association with popcorn lung, and it's dramatically less than cigarettes. All right. Um, we've also got, uh, here's another article on, oh, this was an interesting one. The association of uh, e-cigarette use with the exposure to nickel and chromium, a, pr a preliminary study of non-invasive biomarkers. So this is a heavy metal study. Uh, this was kind of interesting because they, they did look at um, body fluids of e-cig users to measure their nickel and chromium levels. And they did find an increase in, in um, folks who were, or they did find it actually, in people who were using electronic cigarettes, and um, but both nickel and chromium. So that sounds kind of scary. But the, the interesting thing about this article is that they don't have a control group, like the, the non, uh, a group of non-smokers and they don't have a group of smokers. They're only measuring in electronic cigarette users. Now, first of all, chromium, other than uh, chromium-6, chromium-3, which is the most common form of chromium, is, is not toxic. It's, it's a necessary uh, part of our body. Uh, nickel can be a problem um, in higher doses. But if you, if you take what they found in e-cig users and compare that to what's known to be found in uh, normal population, uh, there wasn't a statistically significant difference. And as a matter of fact, in many cases, what they found in, in terms of nickel and chromium was less than what's in the normal population. It's inconvenient to report that, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure why they didn't have a control group. Uh, studies should have control groups. Uh, this one didn't. It just wanted to report heavy metals and electronic cigarette users. Uh, now we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Oh, this is one of my favorite ones here. Um, these cigarettes emit very high, high formaldehyde. Uh, oh, this was the hidden formaldehyde in e cigarette aerosol. Hidden formaldehyde in e cigarette. And I talked about this one in my um, video on formaldehyde, the, the first one that I put out. And, and I'll go over this one again. They basically uh, overheated an older coil and were able to produce uh, a chemical. Uh, they didn't find formaldehyde. They even said they didn't find formaldehyde in there. They found formaldehyde releasing agent. What did they say about formaldehyde releasing agent? Well, we don't know what it does. Nobody really knows what it does. But if it acts like formaldehyde, then it could be, uh, e cigs could be 15 times as carcinogenic as cigarettes. Okay, that's kind of a leap. I don't know how this got published in the New England Journal of Medicine when they s said that they found something that they said they didn't find. That's kind of contradictory to begin with. Uh, but then to say that what they did find wasn't formaldehyde, but if it acted like formaldehyde, it would be bad. Okay, I'm kind of scratching my head on that one. How, how do you refute, refute this? But the media picked this one up and it was the, the headlines were e-cigs are 15 times more carcinogenic than cigarettes. They didn't even find formaldehyde, but it, it, it takes off, and it's kind of an interesting thing as to how the media handles that. 
Um, again, I'm not sure how this one got published, but it, it's out there. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Farsalinos, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of him. He published a, a study just recently to refute this. And basically what he did was he reproduced the study, but found that the only way that you could produce formaldehyde in electronic cigarettes is to dramatically overheat the coils. Uh, and again, I think I showed that in my initial video. Uh, you can also uh, produce formaldehyde if you have a burn coil that normally wouldn't produce formaldehyde and it gets uh, overheated. I showed that in another video. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've got these, these four studies here that are just, it's just bad science. And they get out, the media picks them up, the media doesn't pick up the good news. They only pick up the bad news. Uh, and they love it because it, it, it sells and, and they, they get a lot of attention for it. I think these researchers get a lot of attention for it as well. Uh, and they get funding. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not justifying that. I'm not negating that. Studying it is good. But I want to tell you if, you, if you do start looking at, at research, there's a couple of, of pitfalls that you need to look for. The first one is if they have conflicts of interest, if they're funded by somebody who has an agenda. Uh, the second thing would be is if they don't use a control group. If they just look at a particular thing, say for instance, they just look at electronic cigarettes to see what, what happens, but they don't have a control group um, and they don't have a, a, a cigarette smoking group. So what you need is you need people who don't smoke and don't use other tobacco products. You need uh, a second group of e-cig users and only e-cig users and you need a third group of smokers. Every study should have that. If you don't have that, your study is invalid to begin with. So look and see if they've got that. If they don't have that, just move on. And the third thing that I think it invalidates a study is a study with a policy conclusion. And I've seen a bunch of those where they, they find a particular thing and they say because of what we found, legislation needs to be created to protect yada yada group. Uh, that's not a scientific study. That's somebody who started off with an idea, with an agenda, with the thought process of creating a policy and wanted to prove something that uh, they could use to justify their preconceived thoughts. Anyway, those are the things that I, I want to go over. These four studies aren't the only ones that are out there that are bad, but time limits me on the things that I can uh, present here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Hey, Stanton, if you're out there and you want to comment on any of these uh, studies, then uh, please do. Thanks for your time and attention.